few things to consider when you are practicing. So at first, what you want to focus on is learning the notes. And I provide the actual notes that are in the scale for you. And you want to use the correct fingering. There is a link that I provided for you that provides the fingering. So if you're not familiar, one is the thumb, two, three, four, five. Fingering is really important. And most of the time, the scales start with the left hand on the five and the right hand on the one. But sometimes they don't. And sometimes it starts on the four and the three, etc. And the reason is, is that if you don't use the right fingerings in the way that you, especially when you're adding in the flats and the sharps, you'll run out of fingers and you'll get to the end and it's like I can't do anything else because it, it, it doesn't it doesn't really work so the first thing is yes you want to learn the notes because learning the notes will help you with doing all of that improvising because if I am improvising a song and I am looking at notes that are in uh, G. I know that it has an F sharp in it. So if I was to start doing like, like you hear that, and you're like, well, that's not the right note. And, and so when you see people hit that note that was an a flat that doesn't belong in the key and when you know the notes then you can do all those extra fun things like running up and down and things of that nature and that's what a lot of people want to do they want to sit down and be in front of a piano not having any sheet of music and just i call it diddly doing just diddly doing all sorts of little things and to do that is you have to know the notes that are in the skip and um, so that's what you want to do. The other thing is that you correct fingering, which I said, and then also um, good posture. So I haven't been doing very good posture. I've been sort of slouching. One of the things um, in order to play the piano, one is you want to, your belly button right here to be on the middle C. So, and it is really just the middle part of the piano, the middle C. And what happens is, is that um, if you need to play lower notes or higher notes, you just move your hands. If you've got to do a lot of extra things where you're doing a lot of things at the bottom, you just move your body a little bit um, right and left. Now, there are some times when I'll playing um, something and a lot of it is really heavy in the end part of the piano and I will sometimes scoot my body over just because I have a lot of stuff to do here but if I'm most of the time and I apologize for the squeaking I have an old piano stool so it squeaks a lot I guess I should put some WD-40 on it now or Pam, my mom put Pam on everything that squeaked. <laughs> so, uh, yes, so you want to be able to just move and being right here in the middle, you move. And you do want some good posture. I haven't been doing good posture. I've been sort of slouching. But you do want good posture and your feet should be flat on the floor. Now, if you're a little bit, um, when you're doing scales right now, you don't have to worry so much about... Um, whether or not your feet are flat on the floor you may not be able your child may not be able to reach them and that's just for the pedals and it's all right if they're not there but we do want some good posture the other thing that you want to do is make sure that your hands are rounded like, like <laughs> we don't play flat um can you imagine like if i play like it doesn't work here's my hands kind of flat let me see here i got little fat fingers and it works it looks a little bit but if i start to try to go fat 
starts to get muddled and I can't do it. And so what you want is like, like a, a little leopard or um, a deer, bounce, a deer bouncing around like da, 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 da. and your and your movement should be very uh, light and moving around because that'll help you to move all around the keyboard. You want to also make sure your hands are, are rounded. Like imagine um, a ball is right here. Um, so you can turn the camera just a tad. So you can see my hands are, are rounded, my little fat hands. They're rounded. And you want to kind of play with the, the tips of your finger. Now this is going to be the biggest thing I know I struggled with when I was younger. I loved having long nails and I loved having um, my nails painted and you know girls just we like that and some guys like long nails too that's cool if you want to be serious you're probably you, and you might be able to have longer nails later on when you're not doing as much stuff but when you really are trying to practice you're going to have to cut your nails I cut my nails this morning so you can see they're fairly short because what I was finding was when I was practicing getting ready for this video, I wasn't, my hands were sliding. I wasn't able to hit the notes like I needed to. And I knew the culprit, the culprit was uh, my nails were too long. So I did end up snipping those nails and you can still paint them and they look perfectly beautiful if you decide to do that instead. So you can paint them and do all kinds of stuff with them. But like fake nails, long nails, especially when you get started, is really not going to be very beneficial to you. And the other thing about having long nails, they not only do they slide on the keys, but they also make a tapping noise. So I'm going to over round my fingers so you can sort of hear. So, so you can hear that tapping noise versus here I am not using my nails and there's no tapping noise and we want to hear your beautiful sounds that come from the piano and not from the tapping noise. When you're going through the, the course and you're practicing, take your time. If you need to go through something a few more days, if you need to do this over eight weeks, 10 weeks, 16 weeks, whatever the case may be, I am constantly, it's, it's never a, a stop with learning scales and improving. I do scales every single day when I practice. I don't, I understand that scales are pretty boring and, but I understand that it helps me to improve my practice as a pianist. Does that mean that you need to go through all 12 scales every single day? Mm -mm, no. I probably go through, I'll say I'll go through C, and then the next time I'll go through D, the next time I'll go through E, etc. It only takes a, when you get better at it, it'll only take a few minutes. Therefore, when you are doing the scales, you should be using it as part of your practice. It should maybe just not be the only thing that you practice with. So it should be part of your, your, your practice planning, not just sitting down doing scales all day. Um, daily practice will help and um, daily practice using the metronome, all of those things will help you out. How much you practice will just be very dependent on whatever you got going on. Sometimes I can practice for two hours. Sometimes I can't practice at all. And sometimes it's five, 10 minutes. The next thing I want to talk to you about is rewards. Now, intrinsic internal rewards are going to be the best thing for for anybody when you're talking about getting better as a musician. Hearing a sound, um, being motivated that you you completed something is very um, is going to be the best reward that you have. Now, sometimes we need some extrinsic rewards, especially if you have a child that's younger. And I do include some stickers. I use stickers still because I like the visual. I like putting up little stickers and saying, look what I did. 
um, you know, little hearts. And I used to be a, a school teacher, so I still have a good amount of stickers around. And so whether or not you're an adult or a child, having some sort of visual to say, hey, I did a good job, we'll do that. Now, I include stickers that are like happy stickers, and then these are digital download stickers that I, I tell you what type of software to use. But you can use any sort of thing. I mean, you can you can draw on it. You can just draw a smiley face. I wouldn't say a frowny face. I put like a kind of like a, you know, like that wasn't the best day in the world. And that can help you to understand like what scale is giving you problems because what we oftentimes do and we do this all the time is we practice the stuff that we do well and then we leave off the stuff that's sort of behind so we want to visualize and say hey you know that e scale that f sharp that's that gives us a lot of trouble and maybe you should spend a little more time on it i am um a big proponent of um, big rewards as well especially for and that's why a lot of people have um, a lot of music studios have recitals because that's, that's a big reward getting in front of somebody and showing them what you actually accomplished I would um, if you have a little child be careful with using too many of the frownies like if all they have is all frownies Add in some other like just regular stars to say, okay, this wasn't the the best day. You know, we, we struggled a little bit, but you still practice. So I would like you to put a star next to that and you choose the color of the star. So they won't have the whole, well, I got a, and you could do that green was success and gold. But if you find that it's not very, um, if it's causing too much strife to go ahead and, um, just allow them to choose a sticker and say, what sticker would you like? That that just encourages them. Um, I would also, you can also try to use, and I said add the faces as well. One thing is, is as you're using, as you're going through, don't be surprised if your hands start to hurt. And, um, It'll get better once you start using more. This is in the beginning of the ebook. I talk about how music playing is very similar to sports. You warm up and things of this nature. You're using a warm up exercise. And if you're having some trouble, usually it's right in about the palm of my hand and going down and just simple stretches like this, putting your hand back simple stretches this is a good one just stretching like this and maybe even massaging right here and if you get to the point where it's painful you need to stop discomfort is one thing but if it's painful you you would need to go ahead and stop take a break do something else maybe also um if the if the pain continues maybe just ask your music teacher to just double check to make sure Oftentimes, it's like the technique of doing something. Cut your nails. That's the last thing I want to say. I know it's really difficult and really hard to do, especially for the girls. I cut mine this morning, and um, I like having my little long nails. I have to do a lot of things with them. So hopefully that talks to you about rewards, talks to you about what happens if you're struggling and you're getting a little bit of a pain in when you're doing the practice. And also how to do, we're going to sit up straight, belly button right at the center, rounded hand, you know, not like too round, like, but just, just rounded hands. And you just want to sort of relax. Oh, the other thing I didn't talk about was the wrist. Oftentimes new students have a tendency to lower their wrist like that. And that also flattens out your hand. So they'll play like this. Everything needs to be nice and rounded. Think about leaping and jumping up and down the keyboard. If you flatten your hands, if you flatten your wrists, you're going to flatten your hands. And so you want them up. So think about having some sort of ball, a softball or anything like that in there to um, make those hands rounded. So that's the second part to get you get started, some good techniques. Techniques are always good to get you better at improving on your craft.
Okay, I will see you at the next video. Thanks.